Hi, it's Katrina. From entire heavy space stations to nuclear-powered probes, here are 10 satellites that have fallen to Earth. Be careful, you never know where they could land. Number 10. The Humanity Star In January of 2018, a private U.S. space company called Rocket Lab launched a satellite called the Humanity Star into orbit. Unlike most other satellites, this one didn't have a scientific, military, or civil purpose. Instead, the three feet in diameter disco ball-like object was intended, according to its designers, to be a bright symbol and reminder to all on Earth about our fragile place in the universe. What do you think? I mean, to a lot of people, looking up at the sky and seeing the stars makes us feel small and insignificant already. Its unusual design meant that it would supposedly be visible with the naked eye from the Earth something that proved to be controversial in the community of astronomers who believed it could have interfered with other observations, and to some could be considered space junk. Initially inserted into a polar orbit, which saw it travel around the world once every 92 minutes, the Humanity Star was only expected to stay in space for nine months. It didn't quite last that long, though, and re-entered the Earth's atmosphere in March of that year, two months after its launch. Did anybody follow this story? Let me know in the comments below! Number 9. Cosmos 2430 Launched in 2007, the Russian-built Cosmos 2430 was a part of the Russian Space Force's OCO program. Crammed full of observation equipment, such as optical telescopes and infrared sensors, its primary mission was to detect ground-based missile launches. Things didn't go to plan with this satellite, however, and a failed maneuver in 2012 meant that it drifted from its intended position. Russian command lost control of it, and it was only a matter of time until its orbit degraded enough and it returned back to Earth. Four years later, in January of 2019, a bright light was spotted by people in New Zealand, with many claiming it was a UFO, or a meteor streaking across the sky. Experts soon realized that it was the missing Cosmos 2430 finally re-entering, with remaining parts of the wreckage being thought to have fallen into the ocean. Normally, re-entry is planned to occur far away from human populations, and it was lucky on this occasion that the out-of-control Cosmos 2430 fell to Earth without causing any damage. Number 8. Skylab Skylab was America's first space station and was the home to rotating astronaut crews between May 1973 and February 1974. It was abandoned with plans to use a newly developed spacecraft, the Shuttle, to reactivate it, but with no way to take it to a higher orbit and delays in the Space Shuttle program, the station re-entered the Earth's atmosphere in 1979 over the southern Indian Ocean. Despite NASA's attempts at targeting the debris to completely fall in the ocean, it entered the atmosphere a few minutes early. Several large pieces, including the oxygen tanks, landed in the Australian outback and it began a media frenzy, with newspapers offering prizes for anyone who could find debris. Now, a collection of pieces that were found can be seen at an unassuming museum in the port town of Esperance, which lay directly under the path of Skylab's re-entry. The Australians charged NASA for the cleanup costs and sent them a bill for $400. The space agency never paid, though, and it was only in 2009 that the listeners of Highway Radio in California and Nevada raised the funds, and their check now hangs proudly in the museum. Number 7. RXTE NASA's Rossi X-ray Timing Explorer, also known as RXTE, was launched in 1995 with a mission to monitor the environments of black holes and neutron stars by looking at the X-ray wavelengths and hoping to uncover new data about the objects. The spacecraft made a number of important scientific observations before it was powered down in 2012, and it was expected to fall back to Earth at some point between 2014 and 2023. This re-entry had a 1 in 1,000 chance of harming someone, because the craft had been launched before NASA introduced standards of public safety that required the odds to be 10 times less risky. But fortunately, it burnt up above the tropics, with no danger to human life when it finally dropped from orbit in 2018. And now for number 6. But first, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell before you leave so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Number 6. The Gochi Satellite The European Space Agency's Gochi Satellite was launched in 2009 to map the Earth's gravitational field and oceans in far greater detail than had ever been done before. Costing more than $450 million, the one-ton xenon-ion-propelled probe collected extensive valuable readings, but eventually was destined to succumb to the gravitational forces that it had been measuring. This finally happened in November of 2013, as it came down into the atmosphere on a route that took it over Siberia, the Western Pacific Ocean, the Eastern Indian Ocean, and Antarctica. The re-entry was meticulously planned by the mission control, 
And as expected, most of the probe burned up in the upper atmosphere. European Space Agency officials did estimate that as much as 25% of the material would have made it all the way to the surface though, so luckily no damage to property was reported, and most of this is believed to have splashed down into the ocean. Number 5. Salyut 7 Salyut 7 was a Russian space station that orbited the Earth between 1982 and 1991. It was crewed for the first four years, was the tenth space station to enter orbit, and was the last one of the Salyut program. The 90-foot-long 43-ton station was left abandoned, but it had been raised to an unusually high orbit, which suggested there were future plans for it. Abnormally high solar activity in the early 90s increased the atmospheric drag on the station, though, and it eventually re-entered the Earth's atmosphere in 1991. On the evening of February 6, and traveling at more than 17,000 miles per hour, Salyut 7 left a trail of fire in the sky above Argentina, and is thought to have scattered debris across the mountainous areas. Boy, that would be a surprise, wouldn't it? Number 4. The UARS Satellite NASA's Upper Earth Research Satellite, or UARS for short, was launched in 1991 to study the Earth's atmosphere, with a particular focus on the ozone layer. Weighing 13,000 pounds, it was released by the shuttle Discovery and operated at an altitude of 370 miles. UARS was originally meant to be in service for three years, but the mission was extended a number of times and was only ended 14 years later in 2005. A thruster burn was initiated in 2005 to lower its orbit, and it eventually re-entered the Earth's atmosphere in September of 2011. This event caught the attention of media organizations worldwide because NASA was unable to confirm exactly where the craft would fall and whether any debris would survive re-entry and make it to ground level. Amid stories of it potentially impacting populated areas, the satellite actually came down exactly where it was intended, miles out into the Pacific Ocean with no risk to human life whatsoever. Number 3. Tian Gong-1 Space Station China's first space station, Tiangong-1, was a manned laboratory that was in orbit between 2011 and 2018. With the name meaning Heavenly Palace, the craft was used by the Chinese Space Agency to perfect docking capabilities and surpass its initial intended lifespan by a number of years. As the first part of the Tiangong program, it paved the way for future Chinese missions. In 2016, though, it was announced that the telemetry link with the space station had been lost, and amateur astronomers soon spotted Tiangong-1 clearly spiraling out of control. Weighing 9 tons, it finally re-entered the atmosphere in April of 2018 and met a fiery end in the skies above the Pacific Ocean. The odds of debris hitting a person were said to be 1 in 1 trillion, but warnings were issued about any pieces that did make it to the ground. Some parts, perhaps as large as a school bus, may have survived re-entry, but officials said that there was a good chance they were contaminated with a toxic rocket fuel called hydrazine. Side effects of exposure can include burns, dizziness, and even becoming blind or experiencing seizures and a coma. If you ever see a fallen piece of satellite, it's probably best to stay well clear. Number 2. Cosmos 954 Launched by the Soviet Union in 1977, Cosmos 954 was the most dangerous satellite re-entry that's ever happened. The probe was a reconnaissance satellite as a part of the Rorsat program that monitored ocean traffic with radar. The intent was to give the Soviets a live view of the movements of enemy ships and submarines, and it was planned to remain in orbit for an extended amount of time. Things began to go wrong for Cosmos 954 by the end of 1977, when it began to follow an erratic path. Despite attempts made by operators to get it back under control, it became clear that the satellite wasn't going to stay in orbit for much longer. To make matters worse, the Soviets completely lost control of Cosmos 954 as its orbit began to lower, and a release system that was designed to eject its nuclear reactor core to a safe distance was no longer functioning. The core contained a series of dense uranium disks, about the size of hockey pucks, which were so highly radioactive that they'd kill anyone who got near them. In January of 1978, the satellite entered Earth's atmosphere and it burned up above Canada. It was seen as being incredibly lucky that this is where it came down, because had it been over any other country, the effects could have been disastrous. Various pieces of the probe did survive re-entry, including partial remains of the uranium disks, and they were scattered across a 15,000-mile area. A massive cleanup operation was organized, known as Operation Morning Light, which saw teams scouring the landscape for any dangerous material. In another moment of luck, it was found that the most lethal parts of the probe had landed on the frozen surface of the Great Slave Lake. Once the ice melted, the pieces sank to the bottom and were determined to be so far from civilization that they no longer posed a threat. Number 1. Mir 
Before the ISS was launched, the Mir space station was the main permanent base in orbit that hosted crews from agencies around the world. It was initially launched in 1986 and was at the time the largest artificial satellite in orbit. Built with a modular design, extra parts were added over the following 10 years, and it was where the record for the longest human spaceflight happened, when Valery Polyakov lived there for just under 438 days. Following a number of incidents and with the plans for the ISS, it was decided that Mir needed to be de-orbited in 2001. At this point, it weighed 135 tons, which made it by far the largest man-made object to ever be brought back down from space. Previous experiences with returning large satellites had never gone to plan, so there was a great deal of anxiety when Mir finally re-entered the atmosphere. Luckily for everyone involved, everything went fine. It began to burn up on the 23rd of March in the skies above Fiji, and a few minutes later, the debris that survived re-entry fell into the Pacific Ocean. Thanks for watching! Have you ever seen a satellite launch or re-entry? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe before you leave, and I'll see you next time! Bye!